you want to drop? No. Do you want me to catch you? The zip line has been broken for three years now, dang it. And this spirited man has decided to take matters into his own hands, dang it. My theory is that the bearings in the skateboard wheels are burned out. You gotta take these screws out, these screws out, these, pull this whole thing down and then not get caught doing it because they'll stop you with their bureaucracy. The plan is to roll up strong with tools, dismantle the zip line track, replace the bearings and wheels, at least he thinks that's the problem, then reassemble the whole thing before anyone notices or has a chance to pull rank on him. This is an unauthorized repair. No permission. Oh, we tried to go through the proper channels. We tried. Wrote up an email, explained ourselves, offered our services, free, sent the email. Then, nothing. Stonewalled. No response. So we're just going to roll up and do it. They'll never know what hit them. But there is one unpredictable variable in our plan. A variable that could potentially get us banned from the playground and possibly the square dances for life. That variable has a name, and that variable's name is Jerry. Jerry is the caretaker who lives in that house, overlooking the playground. Jerry is the eye in the sky watching us all. And Jerry runs a tight ship. But we're prepared for Jerry. So I think, can you come over sooner than 4.30? Yes. Okay, because we're going to need to do some Werner Herzog style document forgery and I think you're the man for it. What time? This man, Werner Herzog, one of filmmaking's great heroes, advises filmmakers to develop an aptitude for document forgery so that you may confuse the bureaucrats who try to get in the way of your production. So we arrive at the playground, not only with Torx bits and two socket sets to open the zip line track, but also fake, printed out emails to smokescreen any bureaucratic procedures with which Jerry may try to stymie us. Prepared by Mr. Slace. He just said that they're gonna close. He's, Jerry's right down there. He just said that they're gonna close the playground at 5.30. What time do you have? 5.08. Okay, 20 minutes. Okay, we can finish. All right, if the cops do show up, they won't be in time to catch us doing anything. Partially tightened, along came Jerry. Fee, fi, fo, fum. 
Do you remember Boo Radley? Do you know who Boo Radley is? Well, judging from his tracks, he's about six and a half feet tall. He eats raw squirrels and all the cats he can catch. Boo Radley is the character all the kids were afraid of in To Kill a Mockingbird. But in the end, he turns out to be not only the guy who was leaving toys in the elm tree for the kids to find, but also the man who ends up saving Jem Finch from the evil Bob Yule. Boo Radley is the irrational fear to which we fail to give the benefit of the doubt. Boo Radley is our lack of faith. Turns out, Jerry was not an enemy to be feared, but an ally to be respected. He saw us working and assumed, rightfully, that we were one of the dads wrenching on the equipment for the kids to play with. This whole place was financed and built by the moms and dads and other people of the community. After we finished the zip line, Jerry even had us help him open the newly fixed slide ahead of schedule. As for the zip line, smooth as an unmuddied lake, sir.